Chapter 1. There is hardly a relationship between academic excellence and career success or success in life. There was a time in history when you were guaranteed a successful life as long as you worked hard in school, got a job, and worked your way up through middle management. The game has changed. While you need certification for some professions, such as law or medicine, most of the jobs out there do not need formal credentials for you to do them. Formal education is fast becoming a myth. Practical skills are the way to go these days. These skills are not taught in school. You have to pick them up yourself on the street. To succeed, you must educate yourself on real-world skills, capabilities, and mindsets that will get you ahead. College is useful because it will train you to be open-minded, develop your critical thinking skills, expose you to new perspectives and ideas, and revel in the intellectual and cultural legacy of the world's greatest thinkers. But be aware that these do not guarantee career or financial success despite being worthy pursuits. You may have noticed that careers consisting of working for a single employer for 40 years are fast disappearing. Company pensions and job security are concepts that are fading away. These days, when you place an ad for small, odd jobs, you'll get a river of bachelor's degree holders applying for the job. People are waking to the reality that the old career and success advice is no longer adequate. We need fresh advice. Unfortunately, parents, relatives, teachers, media pundits, and politicians push young people towards academic intelligence. They call it education. The following tidbits share practical advice that can help you take advantage of the myriad of opportunities to succeed in life. Ken Robinson says, Schools Kill Creativity. Michael Ellsberg. Chapter 2. In the current work environment, learning and professional development must continue throughout life. The 21st century digitized and globalized economy has turned every traditional assumption on its head, including our assumptions about education. The modern educational system needs to take the new reality seriously by teaching children practical life skills and career-oriented content that will help them to tackle real-world challenges. Michael Ellsberg explains how he had to learn from these self-educated millionaires to become successful in life despite his college degree. He discovered that his adult happiness, fulfillment, success, or contribution to others had nothing to do with his going to college. Instead, this success came from investing in zillions of workshops and reading a zillion books until something started to shift. If you want to succeed in your work and life, you must become a lifelong learner. Lifelong learning and professional development are not meant to replace college because a traditional college education, in its most elite conception, is not intended to teach practical skills at all. Thus, they are almost mutually exclusive. According to Malcolm Gladwell, author of Outliers, The Story of Success, two men can have similar IQ and not have similar levels of success. He gave the example of Oppenheimer and Christopher Langan. Oppenheimer's practical intelligence in navigating his way through the people who could influence his success in the world helped him to be successful. Conversely, Langan's lack of this type of intelligence prevented him from gaining a toehold in the world of practical achievement. Gladwell showed that once a person has demonstrated passable, logical, analytic, and academic skills, other factors like creativity, innovative thinking, and practical and social intelligence have much more influence on real-world results. Thus, the development of attitudes does not happen in formal institutions, but out in the real world. Education is not equal to academic excellence. True, you may learn valuable things in school, but your success is not tied to that. Instead, it has to do with your innovative, your persistence, your ability to contribute to the lives of others, your ability to come up with good ideas and pitch them to others effectively, and a total, unwavering belief in your eventual triumph through all the ups and downs, no matter what the naysayers tell you. Chapter 3. Knowledge Work Has Caused a Shift from an Agrarian to an Industrial Society The Great Recession of 2008 to 2010 caused a shortage in the number of jobs available to college graduates. Most of these graduates incurred student loans that rose to $100,000 and sacrificed four years of their productive lives only to discover that the jobs they were promised upon graduation had vanished. Most of these jobs are now being outsourced to people in developing countries who will earn lower wages than the average worker in the developed world. In a bid to settle this debt, many graduates have been forced to take up low-level jobs that are completely different from their course of study and pay far less than they anticipated while in school. These outcomes have caused many people to question traditional assumptions about making a mark in the world. In the last century, large bureaucratic corporations dominated the path of social mobility, from school age to retirement. Hence, people who wanted to be successful studied hard in school, went to a good college, got an entry-level job at an enormous corporate or government bureaucracy, and rose through middle management ranks. Today, two things have upset this balance. They are the death of job security, new opportunities for flexible, self-created, independent careers created by the Internet. This growing competition has forced many people to create careers for themselves that can't be outsourced, offshored, or automated. These people are called knowledge workers. A knowledge worker is someone who has developed the capacity to create a career rather than picking from existing careers. For knowledge workers in the world now, their work tools have become so affordable that the means of production have once again become accessible to individual workers. 
These workers no longer have to wait for their employers to provide their tools. This makes it easier for them to quit their jobs and start their own businesses. In addition to owning the means of production, knowledge workers are beginning to see that formal educational credentials are irrelevant to the new economic reality they are operating in. Instead, it is about performance and results. Did you know? According to Consumer News and Business Channel, CNBC, in 2016, nearly 30% of today's billionaires do not have a bachelor's degree. Chapter 4. We must learn to reconcile our deepest dreams of making a difference in the world with the stark reality that the world doesn't always care about effort. If you want to make a real impact globally, you must be willing to take risks and be ready for multiple failures. Failures can't be avoided and are a part of learning. Hence, focus on bouncing back whenever you fail. You can go from being broke, miserable, and desperate to building your own dream career that is both meaningful and lucrative. Everyone dreams of becoming great, making an impact in the world. However, the world does not care about our intentions. It will not hand out freebies to us because we have potential. Therefore, we must be ready to go out on a limb and make the hard choices. Making an impact involves going beyond what already exists in any given workplace, organization, field, marketplace, or society. It requires innovating, bringing to life what would not have happened without you. Making an impact poses financial risks, and to be famous or wealthy, your impact must reach many people. This poses two challenges. You need to lead people to impact them, and there's always competition for the position. The need to control the narrative is akin to trying to control luck. Whenever you face two paths in your career, there is always a choice between a predictable path and one that offers the chance to make a bigger impact. Expectedly, choosing the latter comes with risks. Similarly, there are also a lot of unacknowledged risks to not following your passions. Some of these include the risk of working with people you don't respect, working for a company whose values are not similar to yours, comprising what's important, doing something that fails to express, or even contradict who you are. Also, the most dangerous risk of wasting time doing what you are not passionate about is believing that you will do it later. The art of earning a living is the art of finding creative ways of bringing the spheres of money and meaning together and making them overlap significantly. Michael Ellsberg Chapter 5 To succeed and be impactful in life, find great people to learn from and surround yourself with them. When you're just starting out on your path to success and want to find mentors farther along the path than you, you need to learn to give. But what do you possibly have to give someone much more powerful, connected, and successful than yourself? The key is to push them up. Imagine leadership as a fountain. Great leaders are the water near the top, ready to burst out of the fountain. However, the water about to burst out is being pushed up by water below it. You're the water below doing the pushing in this case. Find influential people and help them reach their goals. Then, if you're of service to them, they will be of service back. There is no shortage for connecting with powerful mentors. It is a long and winding road. You may need to go to extreme lengths, but know that one good mentor can literally change the direction of your entire life. It's worth the effort. And on a bigger picture, you are a reflection of the 20 or 30 people who give you the best advice. Michael Ellsberg Connection capital is the thing that can help you expand your network of connections and is not significantly used up in expanding this network. Invest in your connection capital. When you give to your mentors, do not expect to get anything in return. Instead, be grateful for the opportunity to help someone who's doing amazing things in the world. These things you give are your connection capital. The two biggest forms of connection capital are your already existing connections and your ability to give good advice. To give good advice to someone more powerful and more successful, you can learn to ask these two questions. What are you happy about in your life and business? What are the current challenges you are facing in life and business? The context will determine whether you'd ask about their personal life or business. You'll be amazed at how open potential mentors are to receiving help. And if you help people, they will reciprocate. Chapter 6. If you start your business with marketing before production, then the market will be glad to hear about what you're offering. The most important part of marketing has nothing to do with communications or ads or messages. Instead, it is majorly about the product or service itself and how it is designed to meet the targeted market's needs. Despite coming up with a product or service that meets real needs, you still have the responsibility of telling people about the business. The recommended strategy for doing this is called direct response marketing. It is cost-effective and aimed at causing a specific response to occur. Unfortunately, most marketing out there is brand marketing or image marketing. It simply paints a good picture of products or services in people's minds without provoking any specific response. As an upcoming entrepreneur, you don't have the luxury of brand marketing. You need immediate results. Good marketing is honest and high-integrity marketing. It is the art of getting your solutions out into the world, into the hands of the people who need them and will use them and derive real benefits from them. It is the art of spreading your gifts as widely as possible in the world. If you can help people get the results they want and you can show them proof that you've helped other people get great results, they will learn to trust you. Real people in the real world just don't care about your credentials. They care about results.
Ultimately, marketing is all about listening to your customers. If you don't listen and you don't care, you'll never be a good marketer. You want to be the equivalent of a good friend, someone who cares, someone who listens carefully, someone who tries to anticipate the needs of others. The rest, marketing research, statistical analysis, economics, and finance, are really important tools. But in the end, you have to use all that information to inform your own human instincts. That is where your own sound judgment and the empathy quotient come in. Chapter 7. One of the most important skills which you need to learn is how to sell because it directly correlates with your real-world success. Before you can learn anything about sales, you need to eliminate the I'm above learning how to sell mentality. You need to begin to see sales as simply persuasive face-to-face -face communication. It is relevant any time you are talking with someone and you want a specific outcome to arise from the conversation. There is a myth in our system that says getting better at a craft is linked to being successful. In truth, success is its own skill. There's the skill of the craft. Then, there's the skill of success. It's an independent education. It takes almost the same efforts needed to learn the skill of success as it does to learn the skill of the craft itself. Therefore, you might be extremely good at a craft, but not at succeeding in it. That's why there are talented people out there in the world who are not successful. The skill of success is made up of three skills. Marketing, sales, leadership. Marketing here does not mean conventional marketing. Instead, effective marketing is the ability to make people aware of you, your services, and your company. If what you're selling is a good match for them, Sales are the opportunity to take someone who knows about you but has never given you money and convert them into someone who knows about you and is also giving you money. Leadership comes down to the ability to change the hearts and minds of people. It consists not in controlling people but in your ability to define a future you don't have control over. Leadership is about influence, not control. If you're taking on the role of leading others, people don't do what you say just because you say it. They only do what you say if they're inspired. If you can get people to become aware of you, and you can convert them into customers, and once they're customers, you can lead them from point A to point B, you can accomplish anything on the planet. Chapter 8. Your brand identity is the sum of everything people think about when they hear about your business. People go to college to build up a resume and then spend years adding to that resume, but they do not spend enough time building up their reputation. This happens to be a big mistake and a huge misallocation of time, money, and attention. You need to build up your online brand around you as a person, not a concept, a company, or a niche. Your own personal brand stays with you throughout your life. Make a list of the top 20 luxury brand names you know. You'd easily find that they are mostly names of one person who started a company, built it over time, developed a reputation for excellence, and along the way, crafted a stellar personal brand. Be fearless in cultivating and expressing your original, authentic personal brand. To build a powerful personal brand, you need to switch from an employee mindset to an entrepreneurial mindset. What this means is that you become the author of your own life. When you adopt an entrepreneurial mindset, you believe you are in control of your own success and development in life and your influence in your company or workplace. You've taken on the role of an active ingredient in your own life and at work. You recognize an issue in your life or your surroundings and work to resolve it. You don't depend on a higher power to make things better. To people with the employee mindset, power resides elsewhere, not within themselves. There may be some safety and security in clinging to the employee mindset because those with an employee mindset rely on someone more powerful and resourceful than themselves to save them and shield them from risk. But whatever safety there may be, and it diminishes each year forward into the age of outsourcing, offshoring, and downsizing, there's certainly no freedom, no self-determination. Chapter 9. We live in a society where we have to fight the myth of higher education. But unfortunately, parents, teachers, school administrators, guidance counselors, college brochures, and politicians are members of the band that sing this song. They proclaim the idea that your only hope for economic empowerment involve borrowing large sums of money to get a BA degree. And once you have this magic degree, your ticket for life will be written. They'd be right if only we were living in the last century. The reality reveals graduates with mountains of debt and few prospects of paying it off. Thus, it seems as if we are heading towards some kind of cataclysmic national reckoning around higher education. Smart people are already seeking alternative routes. It involves replacing or complementing academic intelligence with practical intelligence. Lifelong learning rather than an academic exercise, professional development instead of academic achievement, holds the key to success. There are risks involved in either route you take, but choosing practice over theory can end up giving you two for the price of one. In this economy, the means of production are now in the hands of the individual, not large corporations. To become an individual with the right blend of skills to become successful in life. Have mentors, invest in your connection capital, find someone you can help to become a superstar in your field, and they will, in turn, help you to succeed. Be willing to break free from the status quo. That's how you become a hero and a millionaire. Try this. A mentor can help you build long-term relationships that will propel you to career success.
Identify a potential mentor in your career line and seek out ways to connect and help them.